Good morning, everyone. Here are the Sanibel Island update as of October 29th, 2022, day 31 of hurricane recovery. Carter Gulf update. As of Friday, they have removed 161,486 cubic yards of debris. This amount was removed in 16 days. City manager pointed out it took 90 days to remove that amount of debris after Hurricane Irma. As a reminder, please do not put debris on the walking, biking paths or on the street. The debris needs to be placed on the right-of-way, which is the space between the walking path and the street. Another reminder, Crowder Gulf is only picking up debris directly caused by the storm. Contractors can't dump debris from a total demolition into the right-of-way. There have been reported cases of contractors doing this the last couple of days. FEMA will not reimburse the city for this debris removal. As a side note, during Friday's question and answer session, several homeowners whose houses will be a total demo wanted the permit process to go quicker so they can get their demo debris to the street for Carter Gulf to pick up. Officials had to point out that it is the, con the contractor's responsibility to remove total demo. Basically, either the homeowner's insurance or the homeowner is responsible for that debris removal. I am getting the impression that most homeowners don't realize that and are hoping to save money by having Crowder Gulf remove the debris. In case you missed this detail in one of my daily updates, each Crowder Gulf truck has a FEMA car following and recording every piece of debris Crowder Gulf picks up. FEMA is keeping track of what they will be reimbursing for. So if residents and contractors keep trying to slip in non-reimbursable material, it is the city's budget that will be hurt in the long run. I am not for sure how big of an issue this is, but maybe the city needs to make more announcements pointing out that total demo debris is not covered by FEMA currently. I say currently because Governor DeSantis is working with FEMA to get more residential and commercial debris covered. The Periwinkle Bridge and Calusa Shores Bridge are still closed and solutions are still being worked out on how those bridges can be repaired. The U.S. Army Corps is still on the island conducting property reassessments and should be done sometime next week. For property owners on Sanibel, letters have been attached to each property at leepa.org. That's leepropertyassessment.org. This is the Tax County Appraiser website. The tax roll value letter will list all important will list the all important building value which is the value everyone is looking for to see how FEMA's 50% rule affects them. This was the value of your property by the county appraiser on January 1st, 2022. The city council urges property owners to hire a professional certified appraiser if you want a more up-to-date value. Again, that website is leepa.org. SCCF reported that 16 sea turtle nests were washed away by Hurricane Ian. This is sad news, but not unexpected. Quoting SCCF, it's likely that the turtles who laid the nests lost during the hurricane successfully produced other offspring earlier this year. More than 35,800 sea turtles, ha sea turtle hatchlings emerged during the summer session. Sea turtles have a nesting strategy that accommodates for storms. SCCF.org has more information if you are interested in learning about the island wildlife. Thanks for listening.